Here we are in part two, ready to finish the outline of this cam rocket, and it's time to work on this troublesome arc. So remember, in math, we need three pieces of information to define an arc or a circle, and that's just based on the equation of a circle. So in this particular part, we know that the arc is coming in and is tangent somewhere to this line. And we also know that this arc passes through this endpoint right here, highlighted in blue, at some point. So those are two pieces of information. The third piece of information comes directly from the drawing. We know the radius is 19 millimeters. So here's how the thought process has to go. We have to reverse our thinking. If we know that the center is up here somewhere and the distance down to this point is 19 millimeters, then I can reverse that and say 19 millimeters away from that point somewhere up here is the center. 19 millimeters in any direction from this particular point is a circle. So let's get started. I'm going to draw this, quote, reverse circle of 19 millimeters, and somewhere along this arc is the center of the, the actual arc that I want. We also know that the arc that I want is tangent to this selected line somewhere along here. So 19 millimeters offset from this line somewhere up here is the center of the arc. So I'm going to use the offset command of my targeted line specify my distance of 19 offset this line and I now have two constraints for the center of my arc. Somewhere along this line is my center, and somewhere along this arc is my center. The only point that satisfies both of those constraints of being on the line and on the arc is that intersection right there. I believe I can snap to it, so I'm going to draw a center radius. I hover over that intersection, I get a snap, and I come down, and I'm just going to specify 19. And then I'm going to zoom in really close over here. And notice that arc goes right through the endpoint. And I zoom in close over here. And as close as visually appears, that arc is exactly tangent to the line. And it is. So I have these extra pieces of geometry now that I'm going to delete. I'm going to select, continue to select. And by the way, this line and this vertical line is also extra. And I'll delete all of those. I now have geometry that I have to trim. I'm going to use that trim command, and I'm going to select this line as a blade and this line as a blade so I can trim away bits of the circle. I also, when I'm done, want to trim away this extra piece of line, so ultimately I'm going to want to use the circle as a blade as well. I've made three selections. I now press Enter to tell AutoCAD I'm done selecting blades. And now I'm going to select geometry that I want to cut away using those blades. I trim away the arc. And then I'm going to trim away, need to trim away two pieces of this line to get back to the finished arc. I'm going to press Escape. And I can delete this last extra line. And the outline of my part in terms of lines and arcs is complete. Let's move on to this third stage down here, creating fillets and arcs. I will use the fillet command now. And instead of wanting a zero radius, I actually want a radius. So I need to type R. And then I press the Enter key and Enter 5 millimeters. Press Enter. And I want to put this 5 millimeter radius between the line and the arc. And now I want to put a chamfer in three different places. So I'm going to use the chamfer command. 
and I am going to type D to tell AutoCAD I want to specify how big the chamfer needs to be. I'll do the upper right first, so I want a distance of five millimeters on the first line and five millimeters on the second line. I'm now ready to click the first line, then the second line, and AutoCAD puts the chamfer in. I'm going to reselect that chamfer command. I want to specify the distance again, but I want seven this time and seven for the second line. I'll choose my first horizontal, then my vertical, and I want to duplicate that chamfer down here. So I'm simply going to press enter to repeat the last command, and AutoCAD remembers the last version of a chamfer was seven, and it wants to put in the same size again. I'll click the second line, and my chamfer is done. At this point, the geometry for this line is complete, ready to move on to this 3D press pull. To do that, we discussed in class that I need to join all of these individual pieces into one object. And that comes from the join command. So I simply type join. My flyout menu tells me that that join command is available and I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to select all of the objects around the perimeter. Many ways to do this selection. We'll cover that at some other time and it will also cover those types of topics in class. All of my outline objects are selected and I press enter. Notice when I hover over the object, the entire outline highlights now and it's called a polyline. We should be ready for the press pull command now. To accomplish that, I'm going to move to the 3D Basics menu, and that selection is slightly off screen for this video. Remember where that came from, the gear wheel. When I select that, my entire upper menu is going to change. I'll use this press pull command, and instead of selecting an object, I'm going to select the boundary inside the object. If I remember that's what works in class. But before I finish this command or move through it, I'm going to press and hold the shift key, press and hold my mouse wheel, and rotate this view so that I can see what I'm doing in three dimensions. I then click inside, move up with my cursor, and then I'm going to type in the 45 millimeters, which is the thickness of the part. That's what the part now looks like. And quite frankly, my perspective is it's a really messy view. It's hard to understand what I'm seeing. So one last thing that I want to accomplish is to actually see it as a solid. And under 3D Basics, I can change my layers and view. So this middle bar is the view option and I'm going to come down and choose shades of gray. And notice now it's much more visually obvious what I actually have. So with that we're going to conclude this video. Hopefully it's been helpful and we look forward to another one.